Hey friends, today we're gonna to be using the BK Beauty Angie Hot and Flashy Brush Collection in Action. So I'm gonna be doing a full face of makeup minus foundation. I actually start the video with foundation on, but I'm gonna show you how I use each of these brushes, kind of talk to you how I personally have been using them. Um, Angie also has a video going up today where she shows you kind of how she uses them. I'm also gonna link our reveal videos in the description box that kind of talks to you more about the collaboration, um, the inspiration behind it, kind of tells the story, um, as you guys know, this is 100% Angie. She created these brushes and put her heart into them and I could not be more proud of them. I could not be more proud to have our name next to hers on these. So if you wanna learn how I got this look using the BK Beauty Angie Hot and Flashy collection, then let's get started. So the first brush that I'm gonna use is the A506 brush and it is our BK Beauty's first ever concealer brush. And you may notice it is designed and mimics our BK Beauty 101 foundation brush, which is by far our best seller. And I feel like kind of a cult classic here at BK Beauty. We have sold out of that brush multiple times. It's hard to keep it in stock. So Angie created this concealer brush to really mimic the same shape as the 101. So I'm gonna use the Lancome Tint e Doll Concealer and I'm gonna put a little bit just kind of in the inner corner of my eye and bring it down about a quarter of the way um, underneath my lash line. Then I'm gonna take this brush and I'm gonna start by just kind of pressing. What's great about this brush is you can get, it, it's gonna still blend it out even if you just press. You don't have to drag or pull it on the skin. You certainly can if you wanna sheer out product, but if you wanna build coverage, use it the same way that you use the 101. And I always say with the 101, it's so great because you can build coverage like this, but you can also use the tip of it and sheer and blend product out. So that's how I like to use this brush. I, I like to press it in the inner corner, press it right here, and then once I get out here, I'll pull and kind of shear it out. It blends concealer in so quick and so easily. And I like the size of this brush because it's not a tiny little concealer brush. It really does the work quickly for you, but it's also small enough and shaped enough to really fit in that inner corner Angie reiterated this brush multiple times. We went back and forth on the width of it, the tapered tip until we got it just right. It was really important to her to get the right size and shape. I can also use this brush for eye primer. I'll, I'll use that for eye primer a lot. You can also use it to contour the sides of the nose if you use like a cream product. I'll do that here in a bit. So next I'm gonna go in and bronze the face with the A507. So this is our first angled blush brush and I was so happy when Angie told me that she wanted to create an angled blush brush because it's definitely something we were lacking in our core collection. So I'm gonna go in with the Danessa Myricks Cream uh, Bronzer and I'm just gonna press this, uh, the tip of the brush into the product. So you can use this brush obviously for blush, but I've also been using it for cream bronzer. And you can use it a few ways. Since I'm kind of creating, you know, a bronzer almost contour shape to the face, you'll see that I'm kind of just like pulling the product down. Once I get to the hairline, which I'm gonna get here, I will kind of just press it so that I deposit that color around the hairline. When you do get to the hairline, you can actually use the side of the brush like this rather than the tip. If you have a smaller or shorter forehead like I do, you can use the tip of the brush so that you're not you know, getting so much surface area covered and you're just getting that tip covered. I love this bronzer. If you don't have, if you look, if you like cream bronzers, definitely try this one. So next I'm gonna take the A506 and I'm going to add a little bit of bronzer right here on the sides of my nose. Next I'm gonna set my foundation and concealer. I'm gonna use our BK Beauty 108 brush and I'm just going to dip it into this Laura Mercier translucent powder in the shade Honey. And we're just gonna set the center of the face, underneath the eyes. So I'm gonna go ahead and prime the eyelids. I'm gonna use my Trish McAvoy Eye Primer and I'm gonna use my um, A506. Again, I'm gonna blend out the primer with this. Now, if you use this brush for all of these steps, like concealer, primer, you know, a cream bronzer, you definitely wanna think of the order that you use it in, right? So use it for concealer first. I wouldn't use this for primer on the eyes and then go underneath my eyes with it because a primer is a drier consistency. So I, don't, I wouldn't wanna put that underneath my eye because it'll just kind of dry out the under eye. And I'm just gonna kind of pull and shear this out. These brushes are great with cream, liquid, or powder products. Oh, so soft, I love this. Okay, and then also what you can do is you can take a paper towel, just like a dry paper towel, and kind of clean it between uses by 
just swatching it off. That'll remove excess cream product if you're gonna use this brush for multiple products in, in an application. Okay, so next I'm gonna use the A503, and this is one of my most used brushes from the collection. Like, I kinda use this every single day, and I wanna show you in comparison how it compares to our 201 and our 202, because it is a crease blending brush, right? Now, you can see that it's bigger than the 202. It's basically like a blend, almost, between the two brushes. So it's about close to the length as the 201 is, it's about the same length of uh, fibers, but you can see that the tip is more tapered than the 201 quite a bit, but not quite as pointy as the 202. Uh, so this is really great for creating a like halo wash of color in the crease with a bit more precision than the 201. So I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna go into the shade uh, Nude Mauve. This is from the new uh, Natasha Denona palette and I'm gonna work this into the crease. I'm also gonna use the side of the brush. I'm gonna pick up the side right here oops depending on how much lid space you have you can pick up the side and you can place it on the outer corner of the eye and then kind of go in little circles and then blend back and forth these brushes pick up just the right amount of shadow making it really easy for you to like slowly build your shadow so it's great for more textured or mature eyes I feel like I'm putting myself to sleep blending <laughs> so 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 soft so next I'm gonna be using the A502 and 504, which are nice, more compact crease brushes. Now, what's really unique about these is the size. When I look for brushes that are about this size in the crease, oftentimes they're uh, stiff. They don't quite blend really well. These, and we went back and forth multiple times to make sure that we got the um, nice, like pointed taper, tapered tip and short fibers, but that were soft and actually blended product. So I'm gonna go in first with the A502, which is the larger of the two. And these definitely fill the gap in our core collection. I'm gonna show you guys. Um, let's go ahead and pull, let me show you um, all of our crease brushes now at this point and show you how they compare in size. So even if you have all of them, I mean, you're, you're not getting like the same brush or size in any of them. They're all really unique in size, shape, and fullness. So first I'm gonna go with the A502, which is the larger of the two. And we're gonna go in and grab a little bit of this shade right here, it's Andy. Actually, we're gonna grab a little bit of this shade Jude. We'll do that shade first. And I'm gonna place that right here on the outer part of the lid, and I'm gonna use the side of the brush and kind of work that inward. So you can use this as a lid brush too if you use the side. Do you see how I'm using the side? I'm not using the tip. What's nice about using this is you're still gonna pick up shadow and apply it, but it's gonna be in a much softer way. So if you're working with shimmer shadows like I am, especially great for mature eyes if you like to use shimmer but you don't wanna pack it on to be too intense, this is a great way to get nice even coverage of the pigment, but in a very soft way. Now I'm gonna take the same brush and then I'm gonna go in with that shade Andy and I'm gonna use the tip, okay? I'm gonna use the tip, I'm gonna mix this and we're gonna grab a little bit of this shade here, Rebellion. Mix those two, but I'm just using the tip because this is gonna go in the outer corner. So I'm gonna place it right here to kind of add some more depth right there and deepen that corner up. So Angie really had the mature woman in mind when she created these brushes. She really created them for eyelids that you know have more texture to them, are more hooded, maybe the lid kind of sags down a little bit. Uh, but I find these to be really great brushes from a professional standpoint because they give such great detail and blend and give such a softness. So next I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna take the first brush we used which is the 503 and I'm just gonna kind of blend out the edge a little bit. Next I'm gonna pick up the A505. This brush is a flat, stiff brush it has a uh, pointed tip and this is really great for shimmer shadows it's also really great for cream shadows or liquid shadows you can also use it on the lips you could use it to like pinpoint conceals so I'm gonna use this brush but I'm gonna use it on the side and I'm gonna really layer up this shadow here and we're going to just press this onto the lid do you see what that does? It's amazing. It's basically like using your fingertip, but you have a lot more control. And do you see how nice and pointed that tip is so you can get right in there? I find when I use my finger for this technique, while it really does apply the shimmer nicely, you know, it's hard to get like right in here. I end up getting shadow over here because my finger's too big and I have small fingers. Next, I'm gonna take the A504, which is probably my favorite crease brush because it is so tiny and gives such great detail. If you like a really defined crease, this is great. If you have very small hooded eyes, this is great because you have so much control. Now, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna grab the shade Rebellion, which we already used this shade, but because I'm using this brush, which is much smaller and compact, it's gonna make that shadow look and that color look a little darker. And I'm going to put that right in the crease and kind of blend 
up. So you're gonna see that crease get more defined and more vibrant. I mean, look at that. Look at the color that that deposits. So pretty. Okay, then next I'm gonna go in with the 503 again and we're just gonna use the tip. I didn't add any product to it. We're just gonna use the tip to kind of run over everything. I find myself always grabbing this brush and before this, it was like our 201, and I'll still use our 201, but I've been using this a ton lately to just go over my shadow and my crease kind of as a finishing step, just to make sure everything's nice and blended. Ooh, that's pretty. And last, I'm gonna take the A501, and I love this brush. This is a great brush for the lid. I'm gonna use it for underneath the brow. I wanna show you how it compares to our 203 and our 206, which are similarly shaped, kind of a hybrid of the two, look at them. So our 203 is the smallest one, and then you have the A501, and then you have our 206 next to it. The 501 is more full than the 203, it's longer. It's still gonna do a great job of picking up powder pigment and placing it, but it's gonna apply it in a more softer and sheer manner than the 203. The 203 is going to pack it on and the A501 is going to apply the color nicely but give you a bit more of a softer application which again is really great for mature eyes. So I'm going to go in here with a shade mod and we're just going to place this underneath the brow. It's basically like a light kind of matte white. Also because this color is pretty, you know, white and stark. This brush picks it up so softly that I'm not going to have like this real intense white brow highlight. I also use this brush a ton for the lid. Like when I'm doing kind of a simple look where I don't have so much going on in the crease, I'll just use this brush and kind of use it to give a wash of color all over the lid. Okay, so I'm gonna go apply liner and lashes and I'll be right back. So I've applied black liquid liner, lashes, that also popped on a little bit of the lip. Next I'm going to line my lower lash line and I'm using this Pixi Endless Silky Eye Pencil. This is the shade Bronze Beam, yep, yeah, Bronze Beam. I See, I love this shade. I haven't used this in a long time but I'll never forget this name because I love it. I was obsessed with it when I discovered it. It's a really beautiful coppery brown, so soft. And I'm just gonna kind of line the eye from the outer corner over till just to kind of where the color of my eye stops. So a little bit more than halfway. Next, I'm gonna take the A504 again. This is the tiniest of the crease brushes. Remember, I used this to add that color in the crease just now. I kind of wiped it off on a paper towel. And I'm gonna go in with the shade uh, Nude Mauve right here. This is the first shade we laid down. And I'm gonna kind of get it on the tip and just smoke out the lower lash line. If you're going for a really like smoky, diffused lower lash line, this one is really great. Now it's fuller than like our 207 or our 204, so it's definitely gonna bring that pigment lower, but it's gonna give you that really like hazy, smoky eye look. And I like it because you can kind of connect it to the upper crease nicely. Just kind of run it back and forth, back and forth. It's also really great for grabbing a shadow that you might wanna put in the inner corner. So I'm gonna mix these two together right here and we're gonna pop that just in the inner corner just to give a very subtle, soft brightness. Now let's line the inner rim. I'm using an inner rim brightener. This is by Inglot and no, I'm sorry. This is by Sephora. It's the shade Coconut. So I'm just gonna kind of line the inner rim, brighten that up. And then we're gonna pop on a little coat of mascara. I have the Bobbi Brown Smoky Mascara, Smoky Lash Mascara, just a little bit. I don't want it to be too thick. Next, we're gonna take the A507 again and we're gonna apply blush with it. And I am using the Laura Mercier blush in the shade Fresco. And for this, I'm gonna use the tip of this brush just right here, so just the tip. And I'm gonna smile and kind of place that right on the apple and then kind of blend up to give a little bit of a lift. This brush is so soft. I love the way it applies blush. It picks up just enough color. It's not gonna overload the brush and you know make a mess. It's very, very user-friendly. So it's great for cream products or for blushes that have some shimmer to them, like this one, because it's real soft. This is the finished look. You guys, I am so excited for you to try these brushes. I cannot tell you the amount of love and detail that Angie poured into this project. I knew when I came to her with this idea, I would have to give her complete control. I knew that because if you know Angie and you follow her content, she doesn't partner with a lot of brands. She doesn't put her name on just anything. Her trust and her relationship with her viewer is sacred to her. And I knew that I just had to say, this is all you. You know, you create what you want. This is 100% 
100% you. Um, so she had 100% creative control over this collection and I think she just nailed it. I think these brushes are perfect for the mature viewer that she serves, but from a makeup artist standpoint, they also are great brushes from a professional standpoint because they offer such precision, but they're still soft and fluffy and blend out. They're that perfect balance of, you know, detail without being stiff or without being hard, without, with giving that blendability. Um, so she just did a phenomenal job. I am so proud of them. I am so proud of them and I'm so honored that she partnered with us and trusted us. Um, I also want to say if you guys have any questions as you start to receive your orders, you know, questions about your order, questions about tracking, anything, email us at help at bkbeauty.com. Email us directly. We will respond and get to you guys right away. If you are a customer of BK Beauty, you know that our customer service is our priority, period. Customer service and quality are is our priority and we will take care of you. So thank you guys so much for watching this. If you haven't already seen Angie's video, I'm gonna link it in the description box below. Go head over there, give her some love. This is a huge, huge day. Thank you guys for your support always. I love you and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.